morning, everybody. Good morning, Tammy. Good morning. Good morning, everybody. We will be starting just a few seconds. Good morning, Emmanuel. Good morning, Anne. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> good morning, church. This is a day the Lord has made, and let us rejoice and be glad in it. The pastor and congregation welcomes all who have joined us in this meeting in this morning. Before we begin to worship, we have a few announcements to be lifted up. Um, we will have change in office, office hours in support of the pastor fully taking a Sabbath day on Mondays, the church office will be opened on Tuesdays, Wednesdays, and Fridays, beginning April 4th, 2022. Current church office hours will continue to be at 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. The church office will be closed on the week of May, May the 2nd. Altar flowers chart will be available starting May the 1st. Please sign up in the Narthex. April the, 20, the 27th is the Administrative Professional Day. Remember your administrative assistance on this special day. Do we have any joys or concerns? Any joys and concerns for those online? Uh, yes. Prayers for my niece, Rebecca Heath. Okay. And that was Francis Notley. And I wanted, I wanted to, this is Becky, um, have prayers for my, uh, John's uncle Mike's family. He died, he passed away yesterday, Mike Cicchetti. And for our niece's um, fiance, who's having major health problems, his name is Andrew Field. Good morning, church. Hello. This is Abel. <laughs> Theo is upset. Anyway, um, I asked prayers for um, my next door neighbor and his wife, um, Anthony and Teresa. Um, as Teresa was walking their dog, another dog from the neighborhood attacked their dog, a small little white dog, and unfortunately um, ended Anthony and Teresa's dog's life. The attack was fatal. Um, and yeah, it's an animal that they love a great deal. The animal's name was Chubby. Um, he was not that chubby, but you know, names are names. Um, but prayers for Anthony and Teresa. Thank you for those online. Thank you for those online. have any in the sanctuary. John will walk the mic around, run around for you. Uh, I want to ask for prayers. Um, Beltsville Community Cats is having a yard sale here 
on May the 7th. Um, and we've collected a whole bunch of things, donations over the last two years of COVID. Lots of cat and dog and bird and fish items and then some other things that we have too. If you have anything that's new or just slightly used, um, we don't want a whole bunch of stuff. We don't want a whole bunch of small glassware, but anything like that, if you want to donate, we'd appreciate it. Continued um, prayers for Ernie and those listed in the sick and shut in and for the, um, the crisis that's going on in the Ukraine. And so we just have to lift up prayers and, and, um, and blessings for them. Can you hear me? If there are no more, can you hear me? Oh, good, good, good. Okay. If there are no more prayers um, or prayer requests, joys, or concerns, um, I would like to add also my husband who is recuperating from an illness. And I just had um, a minor surgery a um, few days um, ago. And um, I would just um, ask your prayers for us as well. Let us go to the Lord. Amen. God, we come to you this day pleading the blood of Jesus over our lives and thanking you, Lord God, for this blessing of today where we can come together, touch and agree in prayer. And your word says, if any two of you shall touch and agree on earth or anything, it shall be done by our Father in heaven. We lift up, Lord God, these prayers, and also we lift up praises to you for what has been uttered this day. We thank you, Lord God, for the Hernandez family and for these fine young adults, Lord God. I know they're not adults yet, but they're growing into adulthood. We thank you for their leadership and for their presence in the church. We thank you, Lord God, for all those who are assembled here in person and those who are um, with us virtually. We thank you for the faithfulness of your servants. We thank you, Lord God, that you will um, be a comforter for Rebecca and you will be a comforter, Lord God, also for Uncle Mike and his family, Lord God, and John's entire family as they experience the death of this loved one. We, Lord God, ask that you would comfort also Anthony and Teresa, whose um, little dog Chubby was attacked and killed. And we thank you, Lord God, that you continue to comfort all those who have lost their um, pets, that whatever may be a cat or dog or whatever type of animal it may have been, but it's like, just like a child to them, continue to give them um, support during their grief. We thank you, Lord God, for uh, blessing Andrew with improved health. We don't know the specifics, but you know right well and continue to be Adonai Rofi, God, the great physician who continues to administer health and healing to those who are in need. We thank you, Lord God, for Beltsville cats. And we thank you, Lord God, for those who will look into their hearts and homes and provide the donations of, of uh, what is needed in that ministry to the community and indeed it is a ministry to the entire community even if you are not a cat owner or even a cat lover the fact that this group is doing this work has greatly improved the well-being of the animals and the people who live in this town we thank you lord god for your servant ernie and thanking you for allowing her to celebrate another birthday thank you for all the april birthdays that you have allowed to um come to fruition this year. And it's with rejoicing and celebration that we praise you for them. Be with those who are sick, those who are shut in. Be, be with those who are in Ukraine, who are in uh, acts of war, acts of violence, even domestic violence, Lord God. Be with each and every one of your servants. 
And we ask, oh God, that you would continue to remind us that no matter how we may feel, no matter how we may seem to other people that we can depend on a God who will not leave us nor forsake us. We are not alone. And we thank you for hearing our prayer and answering each one of them in its own way and its own time. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. Okay, now it's time for the young people's check-in. again uh it is time for the young people's check-in okay i'm just looking around and um today who's with us i know i heard um a voice earlier on the on the zoom who else is with us besides young people here in the um church anybody online Hi. Hi. Is that Levi? Yes. Oh, cool beans. Okay. Anyone else? Okay, Levi. And Levi's dad. Um, today we're going to talk about something you may be familiar with, and it's called nicknames. Have you ever heard of that expression, nickname? Yes. I see an affirmative from Howie here in the in the congregation. Yes, you know what? What is a nickname? Another name. Another name? For someone. Yeah, it's another name. Good way of saying it. People, when they're born on their birth certificates, they may have one name, but in actuality, their family or friends may call them another name, right? Uh -huh. I had a cousin and I didn't. This just popped in my head. I had a cousin we always called, and especially down south, everybody in south practically has a nickname. And we used to call this cousin by a particular name, even into adulthood. And one day I saw her and I said, hello, stinky. <laughs> and she just sort of like clutched her pearls and she went down on one knee and she said, my name is Velma. And I was like, my whole life, I never knew your name was Velma. I always knew your name was Stinky because that was her nickname and that was the name that we had assigned to her growing up. But anyway, I want to talk briefly about, uh, and I'm gonna come back around and ask you guys at the end if you have any, have any nicknames. I wanna talk briefly about um, the 12 disciples, okay? And some of them had nicknames. Well, probably more than that, but I was briefly. The more famous one, his name is Simon. Does anybody know what Simon's nickname was? What else did they call Simon? Peter. Did you know Peter and Simon were the same people? I asked that some people's heads are not nodding. Yeah. So, and um, there was Simon who was also known as Peter. And um, there was his brother, Andrew. And even today, um, people have these names, uh, Simon, they have Peter, they have Andrew. And a lot of times when you hear the um, person named Andrew, they either call them one of two nicknames, Andy or Drew, that's very common. So there is um, James and James had a brother named John. And a typical nickname for somebody named James might be what? Jimmy, yeah, Jimmy, Jimmy. Okay, and John might just be Johnny. And, um, you know, John F. Kennedy was called Jack, and I found out Jack was a nickname for John. Well, never mind. <laughs> it was confusing to me. Okay, and then there's Philip, and um, sometimes people shorten that name to Phil. There was Bartholomew, whose actual, um, there's another name that he had, and I think was Nathaniel. Um, Thomas, and uh, Thomas, had a nickname, and we're gonna talk about Thomas later today. And you've heard the expression Doubting Thomas? So this Thomas was the one they called Doubting Thomas. Okay, Doub Doubting Thomas. And, um, and, uh, and then there's Matthew, and, and I have an uncle named Matthew, and sometimes they call uh, Matthew, they'll shorten the name and they'll say Matt, or they say Maddie, which is very popular now. 
And then um, another, there was another Jane. And sometimes if you have two people with the same name, you tend to call one by a certain name and one by another name. So there was James and his, um, his um, uh, dad's name was Alpheus. It was Thaddeus. Thaddeus was also um, named Judas. Remember a couple of weeks ago, I might've said there were two disciples named Judas. Thaddeus's name was Judas. And he um, was um, distinguished between the other Judas because there's another Judas whose name is Judas, who is the son of Iscariot. So they call him Judas Iscariot. So, um, and Thaddeus um, would have also, in some cases, been have called, would have been called Jude as a shortening of the name Judas. So then there's Simon as another Simon besides Simon Peter. And this Simon was um, Simon, he was a Canaanite. So he was not, he was not a Jewish um, person, but he was from another, um, well, he, well, I'll put, I'll take it back. I'll, let me roll that back a little bit. He could have had a Jewish father, but the chances are because he was a Canaanite, he had a mother that was not Jewish. And, um, and the Jewish people would recognize you as a Jew based on whether or not your mother was Jew. Your dad could be anything, but they, if your mom's Jew, you're, you're a Jewish person, then you're considered a Jewish person. And of course there's um, Judas Iscariot. And um, even today, when we use that name Judas, what do we usually mean by that if we call somebody Judas? A traitor, it's a traitor, it's not, it's not a good name. So if, you know, when I would write about the other Judas, I probably would have used Thaddeus or another name too, just to distinguish that I'm not the one who was a traitor. Now, we um, are going to hear a little bit more about some of these disciples later in the sermon, and, but I want you just to remember um, a couple of key things here. We had these 12 disciples, um, a couple of them were brothers, and they had different nicknames, and the nickname is going to be important, and Simon and Andrew, they were brothers, um, they had uh, James and John, um, they were brothers. And uh, there were a couple of people named Judas and, uh, and there were a couple of people named James. So it was uh, an eclectic group of, of, of guys that were with Jesus. And I want to hear if you guys had any nicknames. And if your, name is, your nickname was Stinky, you don't have to share that with me. <laughs> <laughs> I know what I was going on. And sometimes people get assigned nicknames for a reason. I know when I was little, some of y'all maybe remember this. Remember the when they used to have the cocoa mugs and they were like these cartoon characters and they were, um, y'all have no idea what I'm talking about. And they had, the, they had one that was like Yogi Bear. There was Tony the Tiger. Um, was Yogi a bear? I can't remember. Anyway, but they had different little cocoa mugs that you could get. I don't know if they still give out toys with uh, cereal these days. Parents, do they? Oh, yes, yeah. You get a toy with a with a Happy Meal or a toy at the, the Chick Fil A. I know, unless you want to get the ice cream cone. How do I know that? But anyway, <laughs> instead of the toy. So and because I used to always go every place with my little mug of Yogi Bear and not Boo Boo, but Yogi Bear, they gave me the name Yogi as a nickname. And my aunt until this day calls me Yogi, okay? She calls me Yogi until this day. Did you guys have nicknames? Hi, uh, my nickname is Gosho. And it started off when I was very little, when I was like a newborn. My mom had a family friend who came to visit and it's like kind of rooted from Spanish because in Spanish, she would call me cosita. Like it means like a tiny little thing. Yeah. And so it kind of started off by all of them calling me cosho, like a little abbreviation from co like little cosita. And, and now they just always call me cosho. Oh, cosho. <laughs> okay, that's a good to know. <laughs> what about you? Do you have a nickname? I wish I had a nickname. We're gonna give you a nickname. <laughs> yeah, I wish I had a nickname, but I mean, uh, the name that my whole family normally calls me is Fabiel, and um, I guess the only nickname they gave for me was Fabi, as like short for Fabiel. Okay. Yeah. And then we can shorten it to Fab as he gets older, and all the girls will be coming after him. So mom, just you know, expect that. Okay. <laughs> 
And what about you, Levi? Do you have a nickname? Yes. Speak up. Yes. What are they? Uh, I think it's called Wee Wee. He said Wee Wee? No. Lee Lee. Who calls you Lee Lee? Lee Lee. Who calls you Lee Lee, Levi? Uh, my nana calling me that. Oh, nanas are so good when you put it in their little um, their heart. They'll call you a little um, short name. I'm not going to say what my grandma used to call me. <laughs> but anyway, but we want to remember that the nicknames have a history and the nicknames have a story behind it. So when later on, when we hear about a certain nickname, I'm going to explain a little bit more about what that um, meaning um, is. Okay. So let us go forward now. Um, I'm going to turn it back into your hands. <laughs> Thank you. Now is the time for the hymn of praise, number 139, praise to the Lord, the Almighty, verse 1, 2, 3, and 5. Now is the time for the congregational prayer. Good morning. Heavenly Sovereign, we approach your throne with awe, but in the company of your Son, Jesus Christ, who speaks for us as our highest priest, receive our worship inspired by the Spirit of, for the sake of the firstborn from the dead, our living Lord, Jesus Christ. Amen. Now I'll read the scripture, John 20, 19 verses 31 
When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for, for, for the fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgave the sins of, of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, you are retained. But Thomas, who called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with them. When Jesus came, so the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he, he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails, in his hands and put my finger in the mark of the nails and my hand on his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were again in the house and Thomas was among them. Although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. Thomas answered him, my Lord, my God. Jesus said to him, have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. Now Jesus said to him, to many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in these books. But these are written so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through, though, through believing you may have life in his name. This is the word of God for the people of God. All thanks be to God. Will the ushers come forward to receive the offering? now do the hymn of preparation number 420 breathe on me breathe breath of god verses one through four
It is now time for the message, solidifying our faith. with examples of miracles. Their own faith was tested in many different situations. They were with Jesus to attest what they had seen, what they had heard, and what Jesus had done in his lifetime and in his ministry. Yet, when Jesus was taken to the cross, all except one of them abandoned Jesus and one other one betrayed him to the point where he felt compelled to take his own life. As you may recall, these men were Simon and Andrew, brothers, James and John, who were also brothers, Philip and Bartholomew, who were actually very good friends. Matthew, um, Matthew, who was a tax collector, whose name was also Levi, and Thomas, the one they have referred to as Doubting Thomas. And this day we will find out why he was referred to with that name. And James, who was son of Alphaeus, and Thaddeus, whose name was also Judas, and Simon the Zealot, he was the rabble riser. He was the one who would take on anybody in a fight. And of course, Judas Iscariot, the one who would take his own life. The other uh, disciple that we will learn about later as we go through the uh, scriptures will be Matthias, who took the place of Judas to become um, the replacement for the 12th apostle who had taken his own life. This day, we hear the reading of John. 
the one whom Jesus loved, the youngest <laughs> of the group, and also the brother of James. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the first day of the week is what? Sunday, yes, the first day of the week. And the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews. And this house where they were meeting was likely the place where they had the last supper. This place where they were meeting was likely the home of Martha, who was the sister of Lazarus. And um, Martha was the wife of Simon the leper. And in that upper room is where they were likely meeting on this first day of the week. And, it, and they were there not only meeting, but they were huddling for fear of the Jews because remember, Jesus has just been crucified. And they are like the FBI most wanted. <laughs> they are the most wanted because they, the people who crucified Jesus also want to destroy all evidence of his supporters being around, all witnesses to what was um, occurring in this time. They wanted to stop the upheaval of faith. The faith was in Christ was spreading like wildfire. And they figured if they could kill these witnesses, they could kill the faith of the people. So they were living in fear of the Jews. Their own folk were trying to kill them. The Sanhedrin, the Jewish leaders, the people who were traditionalists, the people who didn't want Christ to come and reveal himself as Messiah. So they were hiding, and they, but they were all together most of them. And Jesus came and stood among them and said, now mind you, let's back it up a second. They're in a room. The room is locked. It's secure. All of a sudden, Jesus appears and Jesus says, peace be with you. Why did Jesus say, peace be with you? You're in a sealed room and somebody suddenly materializes. What would be going on with you? You'd be like, oh my God, you'd be freaking out. So Jesus like, calm down, fellas, peace. <laughs> peace be with you, calm yourselves down. And so, and after he says this, he shows them his hands and he shows them his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus says this, says this, uh, says this to them again, peace be with you. Why do you think they're freaking out now? Because he's alive. They're just freaking out because, you know, we saw you crucified. Peter and, and, and John had gone to the tomb to see that the tomb was empty. They had come back to tell the others, or oh, actually they went home, <laughs> but later on got together. They're telling the others what, ha what happened. And they're freaking out because they see this resurrected Christ before them. So he has to say again to them, peace. <laughs> oh, 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 calm it down, fellas. Calm it down. And so then he's speaking to them, peace be with you. As the father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, oh, do you hear me? Do you hear the breath? I'm gonna have to go over here. Give me a second. <laughs> I want that. That doesn't work either. Everybody blow air on your own. <laughs> but they hear the whoosh when he's singing this whooshing sound to them. And he's saying, because he's breathing on them. He's actually breathing on them. And he's saying, um, receive the Holy Spirit. When was the last time that you remember breath of God was given to humans? At the creation. When Jesus, not Jesus, when, um, when God took the clay that God had molded and did what? <sighs> Breathe into the nostrils and the man, the Adama, became a living being. 
So Jesus now is doing a divine impartation of the Holy Spirit. The word spirit is pneuma in the Greek, ruach in the Hebrew. The word ruach means breath, it means wind, it means spirit. We use the word pneuma to mean what? Pneumonia, which is where? In the lungs, right? So when we hear that, that is what's going on. So he is giving them a divine impartation of the spirit. And this is important because he does not say to them these words until they have received the Holy Spirit. And he says this, receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. Now, he's not speaking to ordinary flesh and blood now. He's speaking to the spirit that is residing inside of these disciples. Do you understand what I'm saying to you? He's saying to the Holy Spirit resident on the inside that when you forgive, it's forgiven. When you retain, it is retained. It's not the human being that has the authority. It's the spirit of God housed in the believer that has the authority to forgive the sin. Do you understand what I'm So I want to make this clear because he does not say this until he breathes the Holy Spirit into them. But Thomas, who was called the twin, and in the King James Version, it will say Didymus. And when I was growing up, people used to say, oh, well, Didymus meant doubting. Didymus means twin. <laughs> Thomas, who was called the twin. I pointed out earlier about there were sets of brothers or friends who were disciples. Thomas was called the twin, yet Thomas's twin was not one of the disciples. Thomas had a twin brother. Well, Pastor, how do you know Thomas had a twin brother? <laughs> because when we were in elementary school, actually, I think it was preschool, we had um, a couple of set of twins. There was James and Janet, and there was Janice and Janoris. James and Janet were a boy and a girl. And what do we call James and Janet? James and Janet. Janice and Janoris were two girls. What do we call Janice and Janoris? Twin, because we couldn't tell which one was which. And when you have a same sex twin, guess what your nickname becomes? Twin. So that's how I know he had a twin brother and not a twin sister. And for the fact they were still calling him this name in his adulthood likely means that he still has this twin around, but this twin is absent from the group. When Jesus was calling these different people to be a part of this new foundational fellowship, people either rejected or accepted the invitation. Because remember, not everyone who wanted to be a part of this became a part of it. Remember the young man that said, well, let me go bury my father first before I join the group? Jesus says, ah, let the dead bury the dead. But he did not become a part of this group. There were others who were not a part of this group because their commitment was not there. Their commitment was not there to put down what they were doing and to follow the invitation of Christ to be disciples in that season. So we have Thomas, who is not only with, um, not only um, absent from this larger group, but there is a brother who, and what do we know about twins? But generally speaking, they, they grow up in the same household. They very rarely separated as they're growing up. And surely whatever formation and experiences that Thomas was going through, his brother was likely exposed to that same kind of formation in his, in his formative years. But when the time comes to make a choice, people who grow up in the same house, people exposed to the same values, the same circumstances, don't always make the same decision. You go one way, your sibling goes another way. And sometimes people ask, are you two really related? Because you act so different. Doesn't mean that because you are all under the same roof that you're all going to be the same product of the household in which you live. So Thomas is absent. And um, it says, Thomas, who's called the twin, one of the 12 was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, 
we have seen the Lord. But he said to them, unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands and put my finger in the mark of the nails and my hand in his side, I will not believe. And he said, unless I get the same experience that you got, Unless it happens to me, I'm not going to believe a thing that you say. Why is Thomas so jaded? Think about that. You've been hanging around with a group of guys for three years. And Thomas was the one, if you may recall, when Martha and Mary sent for Jesus and they said, Lord, our brother Lazarus is dying. And they wanted him to come quick so, they could, so Lazarus could be saved. Remember that? And when Thomas was the one, when Jesus was like, let's wait. And once he waited and he announced to the group, Lazarus is dead. And the disciples are like, well, why is he going now? If Lazarus is dead, what's the point? It's too late to go into a situation when it looks like it's bad. Jesus is like, Lazarus is dead. Let's go back to Bethany. Thomas was the one who stood up and said, if he goes to die, let us all go and die with him. Thomas was the brave, outspoken one. Thomas was the one brazen enough to follow Jesus to the end at that time in his life. But being around these men for three years, when they started to scatter, especially Peter, the leader, when they started to scatter and to run for their lives, Thomas is like, Oh man, y'all a bogus bunch of hypocrites. Y'all out, I'm out too. So now that they come and tell Thomas something they've all experienced, you see why he doesn't really want to believe them? Yeah, uh-huh, mm-hmm. For three years, you're telling me you're going to stick by him. For three years, you told me you're going to go you know, to the end with him. And then when it was time for you to stand up, you didn't. So Thomas is very discouraged and he's not trusting this group of people because he feels as if he's been duped. What did Gomer Pyle used to say? Fool me once, shame on you. Fool me twice, shame on me. So Thomas says this and he does not believe. He declares, I will not believe because his, 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 his faith is out the window. So a week his disciples were again in the house. A week later, it's another Sunday. You're gonna see a pattern after a while. <laughs> he, disciples were again in the house and Thomas was with them this time. Although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, what? Peace be with you. By now, you know why he's saying peace be with you, right? <laughs> okay, you got it. Then he said to Thomas, Mind you, it's a week later. The conversation was had with Thomas the Sunday before. It's the following Sunday. And Jesus says to Thomas, put your finger here and see my hand. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. Ooh, uh, 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 uh. I'm freaked out because this man just appeared. Now I'm freaking out more because this man is saying back the words to me that I just said to somebody last week. Hello. Nobody had a conversation with Jesus, but Jesus knew the words and the challenges that Thomas had put before the disciples. How is that possible? Remember what had the disciples received while Jesus was there. What had the disciples received? The Holy Spirit. When Thomas was speaking to them, Thomas was also speaking in the presence of the Holy Spirit. Jesus and the Spirit are one. The Father, the Son, and the Spirit are one. What the Spirit knows, so does Jesus. And Jesus through the spiritual realm knows what Thomas has said. And Thomas responds, my Lord and my God, my master and the one that I worship. So Jesus says to him, have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. 
Jesus says, if you have not seen him bodily, if you have not put your hand in his wounds, placed your hand in his side, that because you believe you are blessed just because you believe and you have not seen anything to the level that Thomas was requesting to have in order to be a believer. You are blessed because you have not seen but yet have come to believe. And the word goes on to say, now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through believing, you may have life in his name. Your faith in Christ gives you access not only to the Holy Spirit, your faith in Christ gives you access to eternal life. And people will say, well, there are many ways to spirituality. Everything spiritual is not godly. Everything that is otherworldly is not Christ-like. Everybody who's talking about Jesus is not talking about Jesus Christ, born of the virgin, <laughs> crucified on the cross. Everybody that is using familiar language is not talking about the same person that you're talking about. So we come as believers in Jesus Christ, the one who was born of the Virgin Mary, the one who was crucified, dead, and buried, the one who died on the cross, the one who was resurrected from the dead, the one who took away our sin. This is the Jesus that we're speaking about. There have been many other spiritual leaders who have died, but none of them died for you or for me. None of them cancel the sin against us by having their lives crucified or put up as the final atonement for sin. The Bible says, without the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sin. Our sin is forgiven by the blood of Jesus. Our sin is forgiven by our faith and belief in Jesus Christ. Our sin is forgiven because the blood of Jesus covers the multitude of sins. And from time to time, I'll show you, your sins are listed. <laughs> listed, every last one of them. But then when you get, when it's covered by the blood of Jesus, guess what? They're all covered. Not that you didn't do it, but the blood of Jesus covers it so that there is no sin to hold against you in the high court of the judgment day that is to come. There will be two judgments. There'll be a judgment of reward because you will be rewarded for your faithfulness. Hallelujah. And there will be a judgment for those who don't believe because they're like, I don't want that Jesus thing. And that's fine, because I used to be one of those people. I didn't believe in that Jesus stuff. Because I saw too many people that were like Thomas experience. You told me you have faith, but then you act this way. And how we behave is a great testament to people who don't believe. We have to behave and live our lives in such a way, not that we're perfect. No, none of us is perfect. But we have to live in such a way that we are able to say to people, I am a believer and I believe there's a savior who has forgiven my sin. We have to be quick to repent and say I've sinned so that our sins can be forgiven. And we have to be quick to forgive for those who have sinned against us so that their sins, are, it's not about us forgiving them. It's about the spirit that we say is in us forgiving them. Even if you can't forgive somebody, the spirit of God can. And, you, and, and not only that, it's not your authority that allows the person to be forgiven. It's the spirit of God that allows the person to be forgiven. You as believers, each one of us as believers has the Holy Spirit resident on the inside of us. That's 
why we can say we are born again because once we were spiritually dead but the holy spirit on the inside of us gives us new life in christ and this is the good news and for this we solidify our faith we walk in faith we walk in assurance that the god who did not spare god's own son would not withhold anything else from us. This is the God that we serve. Amen. Let us pray. God, we thank you for the gift, the sacrificial gift of Jesus Christ on the cross at Calvary. We thank you, Lord God, that you have saved us and given us access to heaven through your son, Jesus Christ. And for this, we give you praise. Amen. 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 Let us prepare now to affirm our faith. And um, last week I began reading just a little bit different version of it, just a teeny little bit different version of it. And I'm going to add the um, extra line in here because it's, 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 it's from the original reading, but we have left out a line that I'm putting back in so we can understand what it is. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, his only son, our Lord who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of God the Father and will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. 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 And I hope as we affirm our faith that we continue to understand what we are saying, why we are saying that you are increasing your faith muscle, that you are increasing your relationship, your understanding, your power in Christ Jesus, because you have authority. You have authority because Jesus' death, resurrection, and impartation gave it to you. Amen. Let us be, let us receive the benediction. Lord, empower those who know you to fully believe in you have their faith restored in you, even if they have experienced disappointment from your followers, have them be fully reacquainted with you and your Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. And as the response is benediction, you will have number 500, Spirit of God, descend upon my heart, the first verse. Spirit of God, descend.